योता प्रवेश मम वाच मां प्रसुप्ता संजीवय तकल शक्तिधरा स्वधा अहस्त्रवणादी प्राणान नमो भगवते पुषा तुभ्य कदाचना स्मृते युस्क सुक भवे विस्मृते विपरीत सी चैतन्य नमा so oh, thank you for coming and uh, we'll continue we are in a very interesting section of the shrimad bhagavatam we have been consistently having classes now for the last i think five or six classes and uh, we are in a very interesting section where little narada's uh, childhood is being described last time we discussed how um, anybody remembers what are the anything that was striking last time we discussed something very interesting what are the essence of the discussions we had last time He his mother. Huh? His mother by this. Yeah, that is the event that happened. What discussions happened after that? The churning. Anybody remember? Sorry. He took it as a blessing. He took it as a blessing that we will discuss today onwards. <laughs> <laughs> you are you are speaking. What will happen? Served the same. Yeah, that was before the last time. <laughs> For the essence of the discussion last time was that the mistakes. and tragedies in the lives of great devotees how uh, we discuss so many examples how great devotees have shared their challenges slips mistakes and uh, also the tragedies that happen hmm? but today we will continue the discussion and if uh, we'll have to go back a little bit for last week because i saw that many of you you know you don't remember also but we'll have to discuss some theme and then if we have time we will elaborate on the theme of understanding today's theme will be understanding krishna's plan in our lives based on narada's situation so for those of you uh, who don't remember the so essence of this chapter is the first four verses of this chapter is where narada's narada's already explained to vyasdev about how he should glorify krishna and then he also started telling his own story now vyasdev is enquiring more he has four more questions to uh, narada and he starts asking question that is the first four verses and then we discussed the fifth verse to the 14th verse after his mother's death how he starts traveling to different places and uh, we came up to ninth verse today we'll continue with the 10th verse and then 15th to 20th verse is narad muni's experience of ecstatic love of krishna because of practicing the process that was given to him and how he by that process he came to the situation where he actually saw the form of krishna we will come to that soon and then 21 to 25 is he loses the lord's form and then the lord speaks to him he hears the lord's voice and then we are going to discuss 26 to 36 that after the lord stopped speaking he again traveled now he is traveling but after receiving the lord's darshan he travels and it is very different so that we will discuss and he goes everywhere glorifying krishna and then 26 to uh, after that the last two verses will be where sutta go swami will glorify narad muni and that's how the chapter ends so the four questions that we asked there further asks narada is very interesting he wants to know that okay the sages departed after that what you did gyan diya aapko pyar diya initiation hua so that the second question is about initiation how we passed this time after initiation and because that's interesting you know uh, we want to know more that is the mood of vyasdev and the third question is how did you become this transcendental spaceman when narad muni has this special quality that he can go to any planet material world spiritual world this veena and he can so how he, how he got this kind of body and finally he wants to know um, my dear narad muni how can you remember your past life how can you remember everything from your past life especially that too is in the last day of brahma we have difficulty remembering what happened last week so we don't remember what we discussed last week <laughs> narada muni is remembering what happened in the previous day of brahma so <clears throat> and shila prabhupad uh, in that section we discussed also how one one section we discussed last time in great detail was this enquiry which vyasdev is having this mood inquisitiveness shila prabhupad writes that the desire to enquire about your guru is very important to know more about your guru to ask him then we discussed so many pastimes of shila prabhupad we discussed last time how in new york devotees would come and ask him 
and he would speak about how he wanted to marry another girl and he didn't you know all the small small details propad would speak so this desire to know from the guru about his life is very important nectar of devotion speaks about sat dharma pricha that inquiring about the truth inquiring about the guru is very important so now see one of the most important why this section is very important is because we have this mood is okay my dear guru what you did after the bhakti vedanta is left see this is very important because he is not asking what you what all you did when they were there see in the presence of a great soul i hope everybody settles down <laughs> no it's okay i understand it's a small place both the acs are on no yeah okay maybe we can get another room <laughs> that room is bigger bhakti siddhant hall is bigger no we can try that next time we can try we we'll, can ask him we can serve better devotees so actually sorry it is booked for some i think the book is on wednesday we have it on wednesday he shifted it to wednesday so uh, the question is asking is very important because uh, narad muni uh, vyasdev wants to know what narad did after the bhakti vedanta is left see because in the presence of a great soul when the great soul is physically present active we may practice very nice devotional service mm. but how much we have absorbed these teachings is seen in the absence of the spiritual master like when the gr- great soul is there physically what happens is this purity that brings out our good nature also but how much we have absorbed depends on what we do when he is not there bhakti tir is only nashila bhakti tir swami maharaj would say a beautiful sentence he would say that in the presence of a great soul how we behave is not as important as how we behave with others in his absence i'll repeat the sentence how we behave in the presence of a great soul is not as important as how we behave with others in the absence in his absence because in the absence of a great soul our behavior will reveal whether we are kanishta or madhyama there are essentially while practicing there are two kinds of devotees kanishta is a lower standard madhyama is a higher standard highest is uttama which we will not discuss so kanishta means a lower standard of devotee is he who's practice of devotional service is dependent a lot on external situations mm-hmm. it's not it's like the physical presence of a great soul or going to holy dham you know all these things make a lot of uh, impact in his practice of devotional service like oh, whether i can i come to a temple whether i get certain facilities all these things are very important but a madhyam adhikari he goes deeper he meditates on instructions he meditates on his duties you know in, if you those have attended his holy name radhana swami maharaj lectures you will see that almost every yatra when he ends you know in the last lecture of the yatra he will always say this is not the end of the yatra this is the beginning mm-hmm. he says as if you have noted it's a very profound point because he says this is beginning because we are going to carry the inspiration of this yatra wherever we go right now we are inspired because we are in holy dham we could be still a kanishta but so there has to be inspiration to rise from kanishta to madhyama you know because kanishta needs presence kanishta needs all this you know external arrangements but guru maharaj will always want his disciple to carry that consciousness wherever that person goes hmm? so therefore vyas this question is very profound what did you do after the bhakti vedanta is left uh, they left i'll have to just stop, stop this notification okay so uh, and also propad explains how you know there's another reason also because a devotee is generally inquisitive to know about guru and from guru so that mood is also revealed to us how as devotees we should be always inquisitive and narada muni if you see initially he spoke philosophy to vyasdev he spoke all how to glorify krishna and all that after that after glorifying krishna then he's speaking about his own life and how he got association of devotees and in this chapter is going to deep speak more about his own story so and this this is very important for us because we are living in 21st century which is you know for those of you who don't know in preaching of krishna consciousness there are three eras or three periods 
in all even christian christians accept this first is the pre modern era of preaching where scriptures were very very important like anything you have to establish you have to quote scriptures and shila proper would also say you know like a lawyer quotes law books you should be able to quote verses so that was pre modern era then came the modern era where people did not believe scriptures but they believed scientists that's why shila proper encouraged bhakti swarup damodar maharaj to make scientific presentations to study make you know presentations in scientific jargon once in bombay pandal in 1977 bhakti sar damodar maharaj made a big presentation he showed some slides on the screen and and it was very intense you know and after the program pandal program we were all sitting devotees were sitting and then prabhupa said it was very nice presentation and then some devotee said prabhupa but we didn't understand anything so <laughs> shila prabhupa said that is very good you know scientists also say so many things you don't understand <laughs> but when our sarup damodar maharaj presented people at least they were impressed <laughs> because they want to see what scientists say and bhakti sar damodar maharaj was a scientist so so that so but now what is happening is now we are living in a period of uh, time which is called as post modern era when people don't believe in scriptures also and they don't believe in science also <laughs> they believe in personal experience what is your experience of this practice so and that experience is considered as authority if you see that's why zolina radhana swami maharaj wrote journey home book where he's speaking about his experience because that helps people come to krishna consciousness so similarly narad muni is speaking about his own story not to glorify himself he is not seeking some glorification his mood is how i can inspire further you know vyasdev to write and glorify krishna how krishna consciousness is so powerful so there is see there is philosophy and there is also personal example both are important when we are studying krishna consciousness see philosophy when we hear no like this classes we become intellectually strong we are able to slash our doubts so philosophy is extremely important past times are also very important because past time nourishes the soul these two are very important at the same time when we hear personal life stories of devotees and uh, we get more, that is the time when we get more conviction and we get more faith in the process so <laughs> therefore we need scriptures and we also need examples of life of the struggle of devotees And therefore if you see shila propa have written books we read them and we also read books on shila propa propa's past time because then we can understand how i can practice so because you know there are many times we get doubts when we are reading scriptures i mean i still get sometimes doubts but then when we see read about the life story of a devotee you know then many contradictions get resolved and i got the connection when when we read fifth canto where maharaj rauguna is talking to uh, jadavar and in that conversation uh, maharaj raguna tells jadavara that you are very exalted and you are not different from the supreme lord and by your influence all kinds of doubts and misgivings are resolved so he is establishing this point that that the doubts that we get in shastras can be resolved when we see the example of a good devotee who is sincerely practicing and uh, shila prabhupad writes in the purport last time we read this how many times devotees you know we want to read success stories because when we read success stories then we get inspiration and narada's story is a success story the success stories are always inspiration right like how some beggar has become a rich man it's very inspiring or how somebody in vadnagar railway station was selling tea and he went on to become the prime minister i want to know <laughs> so those kind of stories are you know like rags to riches they say so like that uh, narada was a poor maid servant son and is gone on to become a great devotee how it happened what it, what happened and therefore this is very very important and also uh, in this uh, section we see one of the questions that they have is time destroys everything but how come you uh, instead of getting destroyed you are <laughs> evolving you are growing more so this is very interesting because in the fourth chapter of gita those who are studied gita you will see that Arjuna asks Krishna similar question. He says, "Actually, you know, I taught this knowledge to Sun God Vivashwan. Imam Vivashite Yogam Proktava Nanam Agredam, and then Vivashwan taught to Manu. Manu Rikshak Vey Bravid. Manu taught to Rikshaku. Arjuna says, 'Wait, wait, wait. Uh, how can how can you teach to Vivashwan? You know, he is like surprised. He says, 'Khatam, uh, you are both of you are same age. 
So then Krishna says, Aparam bhavato janma, param janma bhavashvata, katam etad viganiyam. Tamado Proktavaniti, Arjuna is saying, how come you taught him? Because you are both at the same time, same age. So then Krishna clarifies. He says, no, no. I am, you know, I am much, much older. I remember everything. That's the difference between me and a living entity. So like that, uh, Srila Prabhupada explains how material consciousness gets destroyed by the influence of time. Spiritual consciousness does not. That's how you see sometimes somebody comes to Krishna consciousness, they take it like, like a fish takes to water. Because somewhere the soul is, you know, they, they are able to accept everything in Krishna consciousness without much hassle. And some people, despite hearing for days, they are not able to understand. You know, some things, so that's a lot of uh, a lot of things you have gathered from the past. So, Srila Prabhupada, the, the purport also explains that how this entire pastime of Narada shows how association of devotees is so powerful. He got blessings of great devotees. That's how he could navigate through this crisis. Because uh, how we have associated with the sadhu, that will help us uh, navigate through life's crisis. Sadhu means one who is absorbed in Krishna. Because, um, and if how we have associated with the sadhu, that will be determined by the change in your life. You know, like, Many go. Many people go to sadhu for socializing also. Like <laughs> I've experienced, you know, when, I, when I'm distributing books and all in the trains, preaching, people say, "Are Maharaj, baito, baito. <laughs> Thoda gyan ki baat karte hai. <laughs> They just want to do time pass, <laughs> you know. But actual association means actual association means hearing, and then hearing and understanding. That, like when you go to a hospital, when you meet a doctor. And you say to the doctor and you say, oh, what happened in the World Cup? India won, India lost. And then you discuss for two hours on the stock market. And both you and the doctor are discussing for a long time. And then uh, you come back. And then you realize that hey, medicine is not I mean, you don't go to a doctor to discuss cricket and sports. You know, you are thinking how I can get cured from this disease. Similarly, when we come for Bhagavatam classes, we come in the mood how I can solve my problems in my life. I may not get direct answers to my problems in the class. But if I'm hearing attentively and then do mananam, shavanam ke baad mananam, usko churning karta hon apne life mein, then I will get answers. So therefore, if you're associating with the sadhu, but after that, if our life doesn't change, and if we don't serve, if our service attitude doesn't increase in the society, that means we are not actually associated. That's very important. And then we also saw a very important section where Narad Muni speaks about how we are all puppets in the hands of time. We are, you know, like his mother is gone to milk the cow, ekadam, nirgatam, geha, then, then the snake bites her, right? We discussed that. So even you will find Bhagavatam consistently in Bhagavatam, everywhere you will find this theme. I mean, this is a very powerful theme. It requires open-mindedness to understand and accept. And this theme will find consistently in Bhagavatam that we are all controlled by time. Time crushes everything. We hear this not to become pessimistic. We hear this to become sober. And uh, grounded. Like, you know, when Dhritarashtra leaves home, that section, Yudhishthir Maharaj says, Kala karma guna dino deho yam pancha bautika katam anyam stu gopaye sarpa grastho yataparam. He says, sarpa grastho, just like a snake comes and devours a mouse. Similarly, kala karma and guna. Kala karma guna dino deho yam pancha bautika. This body made up of five elements is devoured, you know, by the snake called, what is the name of the snake? Time. Katam anyams to gopai. The third line says, who can protect whom? You know, we are so much dependent on the fallible soldiers of our near and dear ones. But Bhagavatam shakes us. Nobody is yours. In fact, there is a very powerful section in the eighth canto. You'll find Indra is talking to Bali. They are fighting Bali Maharaj and the, the demons and the demigods are fighting. So Bali Maharaj is losing the battle. He's lost the battle to Indra. And he's about to be defeated. And in this 11th chapter verse, Bali Maharaj says, this is astonishing verse. And he's like about to be defeated and is completely vanquished. And he smiles. And he says, Sangrame vartamananam kala chodita karmanam Kirtir jayo jayo mrithyur sarve shamsyur anukramat. He says, in this battlefield, you know, 
everybody is under the influence of eternal time somebody gets kirti kirti jayo jayo mrityu somebody is dying but sarvesham sure anukramat everybody will eventually be taken over by time so he is saying that according to our destiny we are supposed to get fame name or loss so shila prabhat writes in the purport that this is very very impressive because bali is about to be defeated and but he is peaceful because he is accepted now that what is happening i have accepted it that we are all controlled by time and that's why what happens you know when we have this element of acceptance we become fearless this is very important in the there is another section in the fifth canto very beautiful verse which i don't recall lakshmi ji she is saying uh, goddess lakshmi is saying that women are lamenting because they want a good husband and and in that verse she says but they don't realize they don't understand that the husband they are praying for is also under the influence of kala <laughs> he is also under the influence of time and these women are in illusion she says although they approach because they want a husband who is who is but they are approaching a husband they are approaching for a husband who is also controlled by time so how can he protect them like this so this understanding helps us become fearless that is the thing so this verse number 9 we can chant once again because this is very profound so you can repeat after me last time who read the translations ah mata ji today we will read today one of we will read prabhu ekada nirgatam gehad ekada nirgatam gehad duhantim nishigam pati sarpo dashat padas prishtha कृपणाम कालचोदिता कम्स अपॉन अ टाइम एज अ मदर व्हेन गोइंग आउट टू वर्क साइड इट टू मिल गोइंग आउट वर्क साइड टू मिल ककाओ वाज बिटन बाय द लेग बिटन ऑन द लेग बाय अ सर्पेंट इंप्रेस्ड बाय सुप्रीम टाइम सो हियर शिला प्रपद राइट्स इन द परपोर्ट दैट दिस इज द वे ऑफ ड्रैगिंग अ सिंसियर सोल नियरर टू गॉड दिस इज अ वेरी प्रॉपर वी डिस्कस्ड अ लॉट ऑन दिस लाइन not an insincere soul a sincere soul is being dragged closer to god by this tragedy and uh, you know many times it is explained how you know we do some action and there is some fault in our action or something we have done and we get a result but then when we get the result we blame god we don't realize that we have sowed the wrong seeds hmm? so and many times we try to understand which karmic action caused me this reaction but gehana karmano gati bhagavad gita says it is very complicated sometimes you know we can't know what action has caused sometimes we may actually perform different activities and get one reaction or sometimes one action may give series of reactions how it happens why it happens we don't know it's it's very complicated so therefore the law of karma if you see narada's example also here what it teaches us is okay there is something that is in destiny something is happening how i can remember krishna now how how i can serve krishna now that is what we have to understand otherwise if you only think of karma as the cause or destiny then we become cynical and we lose faith in god so um, if we remember krishna that's when we make progress in spiritual life so the whole idea of karma is karma philosophy is to transform a negative situation to a positive one therefore his is narada's response is epic what we are going to read now the way he is responding to the situation is very 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 special and we saw last time in detail how everybody gets different you know like we saw dhruva got lot of opulences as mercy of krishna but narada was his, his opulences was taken so how krishna what krishna does for a devotee is very special hmm? and we discuss how kritadyuti blamed the lord for the tragedy in her life narada is not blaming narada is taking it as blessing and we saw chitraketu maharaj also went through tragedy parishit maharaj also went through tragedy tragedy so therefore not everyone can accept tragedies we need blessings we need understanding of scriptures suniti she could act she could help druva act properly uttanapad when he when he was quiet when suvishi blamed chastised druva suniti could counsel druva and help him not have malicious feelings towards his step mother so acceptance of what happens to us that is law of karma and acting appropriately is our dharma 
So both both go hand in hand. You can't just take only karma. You know. So sincere and mature devotee. You know, we practice. You know, there are the sixty-four items of devotional service, and we practice all these items like you know, chanting, hearing, Bhagavatam, association. The whole idea is when we do that, we develop maturity, and we can respond in provocative situations properly. A conditioned soul often misunderstands Krishna's plan. Krishna has some plan for us. Now that you have come to Hare Krishna movement, Krishna has taken charge of your life. So we need to become refined. We need to understand what is Krishna's plan. And if we have maturity, then we'll be able to accept what Krishna orchestrates in our lives, and then also perform actions that are healthy. You now it's like a murder mystery suspense movie plot. You know, when the movie is going on, you don't understand what is happening where. <laughs> Some scenes don't make any sense, but in the end of the movie, everything falls in place. Everything that happened in the beginning, it was connected to some final thing. So, therefore, it is important that we understand Krishna's plan. When we read Narada section, we may say, "Yes, I understand Krishna's plan," but most of us have problems not with Krishna's plan. We do, we don't blame Krishna's intention, but we we have problem with devotees who communicate Krishna's will to us. <laughs> we don't have problems with Krishna. <laughs> we have problems with devotees of Krishna. You know. because we will not blame krishna because you know we we are devotees of krishna but uh, but krishna uses devotees to give us reaction generally right krishna will directly not come and say okay i'll give you the reaction a devotee comes and just because we are receiving pain through some devotees uh, so we start we what we need to do is we need to do the needful it's not that we go and embrace a devotee you know you are maybe hurt by a devotee no It's okay. You do whatever is practically needed, but we can't develop bridges mm. against other devotees because the, he was that devotee was an instrument. Krishna mm. used him to give me some reaction. So just like a postman comes and gives you some bad news, you don't slap him. <laughs> Tomorrow he comes and gives you some uh, money, money order. You don't go and embrace him. <laughs> so the devotees are instruments used by Krishna to teach us lessons, and basically Krishna is using the devotees to help us come closer to Krishna. Non-devotees are also instruments, no? Not only devotees. Yeah. You're right. Correct. Thank you. I stand corrected. <laughs> See what happens many times, you know, devotees. We go to the other extreme. We um, we use karma, and then you know we start asking questions like, "Oh, that lady was raped. Is it our karma?" You know, we start we start getting emotional issues. We start getting law of karma wrongly applying law of karma. because law of karma is that that law is meant for elevating our consciousness not degrading see there is animal life there is human life and there is divine life so law of karma is to help us come to human life from animal life and then help us go from human life to divine life it is not for post mortem some event happens law of karma is never to be used as a post mortem analysis it is for prognosis it is for how to act in future how, how i should perform good actions so that i can get good reaction you can't just sit back and you know like demonic people generally do that mm. they go back and they keep saying oh i did this so law of karma is so what happens you know they forget their dharma they focus on karma <laughs> like kamsa when when goddess durga appeared you know he was trying to kill seven child the the eight child which was exchanged by vasudev he tried to kill that girl and then she appeared as durga what did kamsa do Kamsa immediately he became overwhelmingly humble. Vasudev went, "Oh, I'm sorry. Actually, you know, those six children were killed. You know, after all, it's all karma." <laughs> he absolved himself of the responsibility. So, the law of karma. Actually, all the bad things that happen in the society, no human being will use law of karma. See, humanity, just the insaniyat hai na, wo kabi he will never use law of karma to explain that. I mean, it's not it's not human to explain that. Human being will never do that. So karma philosophy <clears throat> is for moving forward. If it is not helping us move forward, then abandon that analysis. That is the whole idea, you know. And karma should never be destiny should never be discussed as for blame game. If if you are entering the blame space, then throw that an uh, karma or destiny discussion. There is something called as acceptance. Acceptance is what is healing. You go to any emotional healer, some of the 
any emotional level will talk about acceptance anything bad happens you first accept the pain you may not like it but kadwa sach piyo hai na zeher marne ke liye thoda sa par zinda rehne ke liye bahut peena padta hai hai na so to die you just need a little poison but to live to alive stay alive you have to drink lot of poison so acceptance so when when you are practicing acceptance law of karma is very good destiny is very good but if you are entering the space of blame then throw away this law so basically scriptures ka pura purpose hai narad muni story is a classic example of how we should elevate our consciousness from animal to human to divine we have to rise you know so when we talk about um, any philosophical point any past time we have to ask is this helping me rise higher in my consciousness or is this taking me down if it is helping you go up then and you are you know you are in a good space your analysis is going proper Uh, if you see most like, there is no example in scriptures where great exalted devotees have used law of karma to avoid doing their dharma see when when kamsa was about to kill devaki he took out his sword or sir could have thought oh devaki must have killed him in the previous <laughs> life <laughs> so now you know, she is getting reaction <laughs> why i should protect her let me just keep quiet he used what he did sam dana danda beda kya kya dimag lagaya what all he did and finally he saved the devaki right so uh, he didn't use law of karma there he used the law of dharma you know same thing pandavas they didn't say okay you know draupadi is karma you know they they did what is supposed to be done and even in the vedic age you know kings they always punish the criminals they didn't say that okay the crime was a karma you know that the reaction you got so basically as human beings our job is our duty we have to perform our duties because when we perform dharma we maintain universal order and harmony so it's not that we cheaply use this kind of destiny or if mere bhagya mein likha hai you know sometimes this is also true jo bhagya mein hai wo bhag kar aayega jo nahi hai wo aakar bhi bhag jayega <laughs> that is also reality but we don't we don't meditate on that abhi ho gaya ho gaya like you know the ramayana is the best example when when dashar when kai kai banishes ram lakshman is very angry lakshman says i don't accept this destiny so ram can, ram says it's all de- and you know he just accepts it as destiny and he leaves but when sita was kidnapped he didn't say it is destiny So if you see, actually, even when he was banished to forest, he did not accept it as destiny. See, he was focusing on following his father's order. He was following the putra dharma there. It was not that अरे भाग्य में लिखा है छोड़ दो. No, it was dharma. My father has ordered me. I have to go to the forest. He followed dharma, and when Sita was kidnapped, also he followed dharma. He was not simply blaming his destiny. That's very important. We should not wrongly understand. uh law of karma so so we accept what has happened and we go forward so narada has accepted that his mother is been bitten by a snake and she died and how we responded to this situation is verse number 10 which is what we are going to discuss now so please repeat tada tada hamishasya bhakta naam sham abipsata अनुग्रह अनुग्रह मन्य माना थर्ड लाइन इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट नारद मदर इज किल्ड बाय स्नेक बाइट and how does he respond anugraham manyamana he understood it as special anugraha special blessing and how did he respond pratishtham disham uttaram he traveled to the north in the earlier times traveling to the north meant you renounced so he left he started for the north so that means he is able to see krishna's hand in, in this tragedy so his maturity helped him see this uh, material misfortune as a blessing and especially because he is a small child for a small child to accept reversal is very difficult and 
to accept it as krishna's mercy is most difficult this shows his maturity that he is a small child uh, and is not blaming god you know you could have uh, this is unheard of like in the sixth canto shila prabhupad says how anybody can get this maturity to see a situation as krishna's mercy it's not easy it is because of some very important uh, thing what is that uh, because generally when you get a tragedy the first thing you do is we blame so what why narada is able to see this as a fortune it is revealed in the sixth canto there is a very beautiful verse in ajamel section tatai agavan rajan pueta etata adibi yata krishna arpita prana stat purusha niveshaya so there it is explained that uh, you may do all kinds of tapasya charity brahmacharya all those things but na tatai agavan papam that will not help you get free of all the challenges all the reactions as compared to yata krishna arpita pranas jisne krishna ko apna pran arpan kiya hai when you serve him if somebody has actually given his life and consciousness to krishna yata krishna arpita pranas tat purusha nishevaya such a person because he is attached to krishna and you have served him you are able to tolerate all the tragedies and challenges of life this is very very powerful and there in the uh, shila propa writes in that purport that a devotee doesn't protest saying that i am a great devotee why this happened with me he accept it as mercy and this is only possible for a devotee who is serving krishna represented and that propa writes there that is the secret of success <clears throat> so and here we know what narada did he served the great devotees and uh, because of that he is now able to have this cool disposition in such a face of such a tragedy generally what happens is uh, most people don't take tragedies as a blessing or as an opportunity we we get we actually become atheist when misery strikes people generally become atheistic you know there is something called as philosophical atheism and there is psychological atheism going prabhu would always talk about this you know philosophical atheists are those who logically is not able to understand then if you make a nice presentation then they are open minded then they may accept but those who have psychological atheism they don't accept god because they have experienced reversals or they have emotional issues like darwin's son died so he became very disturbed and then the old theory came up very famous jewish rabbi his child died about progeria then he became doubtful so generally when when we encounter emotional difficulties then we become resentful and become psychologically atheist so to deal with philosophical atheism is not difficult but because they have no emotional issues with god you know but and we can make friends with them be nice with them but this is more difficult because then there are bitter feelings towards god then nothing can be done therefore uh, it's you know and the psychological atheism the, the reason why this comes is because you know we even when we come to hari krishna we expect miracles most people honestly we expect miracles in our and then our expectations are very high and why these expectations are high because we think i'm very special you know <laughs> so i'm very special and there are and krishna should give me nice you know miracle should happen in my life so then when you don't get that then what happens is we become atheistic but if you associate with senior devotees mature devotees and we understand that oh, i am insignificant and then we slowly learn to rise beyond ourselves then we can get attached to the devotees serve devotees and then we will be able to survive those tragedies basically we will not expect anything from krishna then <laughs> when we expect too much from krishna and he doesn't get fulfilled then we become atheistic there are some devotees who become atheistic or you know they lose faith in krishna during tragedies is also because of uh, because of the lifestyle they have what i mean is you know in shila prabhupad writes in this beautiful you know there's a very beautiful verse in the bhagavatam 13th chapter of 10th canto tatte nu kampam where brahma ji says that how we have to tolerate difficulties so that purport in an act of devotion while explaining this one of the qualities prabhupad writes in the purport that this verse should be the guide guide torch torch guide for devotees and devotees should not expect immediate relief from distress but why we expect immediate relief shila prabhupad says because of our lifestyle 
because our modern lifestyle what happens you know we get everything immediately you want a taxi now to go home mm-hmm. you have an app you want fast food you want good food say fada fada tha and everybody everything is advertised that you get very fast you, it's hot you will put on the ac you get cold so we get everything immediately nowadays so what happens is uh, we have got condition to this lifestyle of getting things quick and fast mm-hmm. but then by this lifestyle by this lifestyle we slowly come to hari krishna movement also and there we expect immediate relief from problems many of us see these are in the subconscious mind consciously we may say prabhu you know i am surrendered the conscious language is different you know devotees talk hari krishna prabhu all the devotee lingo it's very external prabhu how are you prabhu i am in maya no prabhu i am in maya no prabhu you are in yoga maya i am in maha maya you know these are all these are all word jugglery lingos uh we it's all nice to talk but the subconscious mind has a lot of desires expectation everything should happen fast you know i have come to hari krishna and uh, i want i want krishna to reciprocate see i'm sending i'm singing bhajans i'm chanting 16 rounds for the last two years you know uh, so it doesn't happen like that you know, you know there are, there is one bhajan where you know two devotees may be singing the same bhajan you know one bhajan, that bhajan says krishna when will i get taste for holy name so this bhajan mana one pure devotee may be sing, sing, singing this bhajan intensely with the desire with the longing krishna when will i get love for you krishna when will i chant purely that longing is chanting the bhajan the same bhajan because in so maybe sung by another devotee who is kanishtha in the internal mood of a sense of urgency and complaint ki i'm chanting for so long kyu nahi ho raha you know so how long do i have to wait kitna aur intezar karna padega so this is because of the conditioning of our lifestyle and we can't allow this to affect our consciousness when we come to hari krishna movement because uh, and this is the reason for psychological atheism also therefore we need to be very realistic krishna consciousness is not a fast food joint you know there is surgery here happening krishna does heart surgery dheere se 8 ghante ka lamba surgery karta hai na bas but anesthesia hai association of devotees is the anesthesia this is like very uh, so therefore we need patience so narada muni is five year is a five year old boy and is able to see this as mercy this is this is actually a miracle this is the miracle of krishna consciousness that when we can see a tragedy as a blessing tapatrayon moolanam everybody bhagavatam right in the beginning says that there will be miseries all of us will have to face and a devotee means one who is mature enough to see that this is a blessing because misery misery exists but it doesn't affect him and you know what narada did even without performing the funeral of this mother he left now this can't be imitated see we have to do what is needed you know we have to show finer human sentiments but bhagavatam is about extreme examples <laughs> you know so one can't be so insensitive but at the same time we can't be so focused on our holy responsibilities that we ignore spiritual life so we basically we are when, when somebody like narada is deeply absorbed in krishna what has happened is he has become detached from everything material this is not escaping this is pura detached ho gaya and this is an opportunity for narada remember we discussed last time the verses where narada said my mother did not know anybody except me i did not know any but this that was his comfort zone mother is giving love he is getting love mother is getting love you know he is de- dependent on mother so he is happy and mother is dependent on he being dependent on him her mm-hmm. he so many of you you know your parents now you are dependent on your child being dependent on him but when they get wings and they fly away that will be your test so basically emotionally situations change circumstances change so and uh, comfort zone se nikalna padega when sudden shock comes in life life is comfortable but when comfort life is comfortable right now and then when krishna changes the situation then what we do so we could either blame krishna or we could see this as krishna's mercy and conditioned soul generally has a tendency to see everything in terms of i basically we are not able to see a world beyond ourselves that's why you know uh, when we go through misfortune we blame 
बट वी हैव टू सी दैट ओके पास्ट में जो हुआ मेरा अभी नाउ आई टू गो फॉरवर्ड यू नो दैर इज अ वेरी नाइस पैराडाइम आई लर्न लॉन्ग बैक ग्लास एंड मिरर पैराडाइम यू नो वट इज द डिफरेंट बिटवीन ग्लास एंड मिरर ग्लास यू कैन सी थ्रू मिरर यू कैन सी योर सेल्फ इट इज एक्सप्लेन दैट वैष्णव इज ही who when he goes through success he sees the glass he is responsible he is responsible. and when he faces tragedies he sees the mirror mera past ke jaise hua and a non devotee a materialistic person will be somebody when he gets failure tragedies he sees through the glass wo oh, wo responsible ye responsible isne kiya usne kiya usne kiya and when success comes he sees the mirror मैं कितना अच्छा हूं सब मेरे वजह से हुआ आई एम सो गुड कॉन्फिडेंस लॉर्ड्स कॉन्फिडेंशियल डिवोटीज आर दोज सी एवरीथिंग एज अ बेनिडिक्शन ऑफ द लॉर्ड एंड दे ब्लेम देयर ओन पास मिस्टेक्स यू नो शिला प्रोपर राइट्स अ वेरी ब्यूटीफुल परपोर्ट टू दिस वर्स व्हिच वी चैंटेड वी हैव एक्सेस टू द परपोर्ट प्रभु यू कैन रीड कॉन्फिडेंशियल डिवोटीज कॉन्फिडेंशियल डिवोटीज ऑफ द लॉर्ड सी इन एवरी स्टेप ऑफ बेनिडिक्शन डायरेक्ट ऑफ द लॉर्ड What is considered to be an odd or difficult moment in the mundane sense is accepted as present mercy of the Lord. Mundane prosperity is a kind of material fever, and by the grace of the Lord, the temperature of this material fever is gradually diminished, and spiritual health is obtained step by step. Mundane people misunderstand. So, Prabha says that it is a fever. We don't go to a doctor and say, "Doctor, my whole fever must be gone. Just a little fever will do." So, material fever is a fever. So, Prabha says it has to go down. and krishna does best what is needed for a devotee yeah. and who why we say that oh that prabhu ji is very close to krishna you know when we say somebody is very close to krishna what is the test how can we know that somebody is very close to krishna is it because you know he is staying in temple or is you know very close to his guru no it is external who is close to krishna depends on uh, how we tolerate miseries and how we remember krishna how you can tolerate the pain and suffering that you are getting in life and in all ashrama there is tolerance i mean i know grahastha with their child i mean managing that child ek to pehle humko apna mind sambhalne ko nahi ho raha you have to manage your mind your spouse's mind your children so when i see grahastha i get lot of matlab unko main salam karta hu koti koti how much tolerance you know i just stayed for 8 months with, at home last two years ago during covid and i understood what grahasthas are going through tolerance so there is a lot of a uh, lot of tolerance in grahastha ashram and in the renounce order also there is tolerance the only difference is in grahastha ashram you know there is so much suffering and miseries they joke about it <laughs> like in whatsapp my cousins whatsapp group everybody is joking about their family life and wives and they release all their uh, frustration by joking <laughs> but renounce order cannot joke about their <laughs> you know like uh, many many renounce order people you know they join the renounce order because you know they were thinking young age na they had the spirit of kuch karna hai no sar pe kafan bandh ke jana hai aise army mein join karna hai sir but not everybody can join the army so then they came to chaitanya mahaprabhu's army <laughs> and then after some time they realized that wo indian army acha tha <laughs> indian army mein kya hai shahid ho gaya to reward milta hai aur ek bar marna padta hai You know, sort of, you have to die many deaths. <laughs> many times, your desires will come up, and companionship need will come up, and then some opportunities will come. Ah, death <laughs> again. So there is tolerance. So you can't escape tolerance in any art. The point is, when you are tolerating, are you remembering Krishna and going forward? If you are doing that, you are close to Krishna. And Narada is able to do that. So at every moment, we have two options. Do we have the ability to tolerate and move on with grace? remembering krishna or terminate the relationship with krishna and go for sense gratification so now we are reading the first canto sixth chapter right when we come to 13th chapter and 15th chapter and 18th and 19th chapter you will see so many life lessons like this very very deep life lessons so now we have discussed uh, today 9th and 10th verse now 11th to 14th is narada's actual travels after his mother died and he has accepted it as what anugraham manyaman is able to take it as anugraha so mercy and he is able to see krishna's plan here now how narada will respond uh, sorry how narada will travel now where all he will travel 
very interesting discussion 11 to 14 we will take it up next time right now i'll pause here if anybody has any comments or questions we can take hare krishna